Hey y'all, Jesse Peterson here with Let's Make Art. I'm a mixed media artist and I love art journaling and I love teaching here at Let's Make Art and I have a really fun project for you today. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. Keenan's our camera guy, hype guy, art cheerleader, you know, all the things. I'm here to bring happiness. Yeah, and if you're new to um, Let's Make Art, he also talks about snacks a lot. So. I do. <laughs> But that's because snacks are required for happiness. And art making. And art. So it's great. Okay, so this is a project in a new theme. So we're gonna talk about our theme this month that we like. We like working in themes here. And I'm really excited about this one. Like really excited about wow. it. Wow, you seem really excited. It's called Roots and Relics. And um, here's, here's what we're thinking. This month we are branching out and exploring imaginative storytelling with vintage photos and ephemera. If you can let your imagination take root as we explore prompts to get you thinking about your own family and personal history stories, or you can just see where your paintbrush takes you. So I just thought it would be fun to do a theme around some old photos, whether they're people you know or not, it's all good. I collect them. So this, I don't know if I'm holding in this in the right spot. You collect old people or photos? Old photos. Old photos. Got of it. people and all kinds of things. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This one I found in Missouri, here in Missouri, and I just love it. Doesn't she just look like she is like tough? I mean, she runs that show right there. Right? Yeah. And like his beard is so good. And yep. they're just, you know, out on the farm, just taking a quick photo before they get back to work probably. Yep. And these girls right here, they just like had a day by the creek or something. And they're just like so happy to be together. Love that. We got these kiddos here. Where did here. you find these? Um, the, some of these I got in Missouri. Some I've had for a minute. I can't remember all I of them. I had that same haircut as a child. Which one? This one? Yeah, the bowl. Yeah. So this one I actually scanned in and made it a part of our collage paper. And this is the project that we're working on today. Isn't that oh, cute? That is so but cute. But I found this one in the same town. And I was like, are these the same kids, just older? Oh. I don't know. Ooh. Probably not, but they look very similar. And this one was like pretty bad shape, but I just thought she was so sassy. And this one, <laughs> like the the photo kind of is, do you see how it's kind of metallic or something? Like the yeah. process that it was made with? I don't know, it's pretty old. That's and sweet. this one, and this one, this one's also in our collage paper. Sometimes I can find them where they're like more, um, taken care of and like in this little plastic thing. This has like um, like the cool design on the back of it where it was printed um, wow. in Illinois. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Look at her smile though. She looks so happy. She's not smiling. No, What's the, the picture about? on the, the table. Oh yeah, yeah. And this one had like a little like writing or scratch on it and I could have photoshopped that out but I thought it would be cool to leave it in for our um, collage paper. So there's the kind of stuff on there. That's so nice. If you like that, you can incorporate that in your layout in that project. Okay. So yeah, so I just found some old newspaper stuff and added that in there and you just got a lot of fun elements this time around to play with as we explore roots and relics. Okay. So, um, also the the supplies, my goodness. The supplies. <laughs> the supplies um, for this month I will talk about and then we'll talk about specifically what we're gonna do with this project. So I'm gonna put my old photos over there for now. Okay, so you may have gotten some washi tape um, and it could be an assortment of any of these. This is from Dear Lizzie, American Crafts, and we just got a whole bunch of these and we thought it'd be fun to throw in a couple in your box. So. Everybody's gonna get different ones, but I think you'll be able to use whatever you get and be make it creative and fun. So, got those. And we have paint by Dilusions. I might have put Dina Wakely on the description, but I meant Dilusions. They're both from Ranger. They're both great quality paints and they're like my favorite paint, Dilusions and Dina Wakely. So, good to know. Dina Wakely is what we're gonna be using for the gel medium. And then in a future box, we'll actually use Dina Wakely paint as well, so. You're saying Dina Wakely? Yeah, this is Dina Wakely. Dina Wakely. Yeah. Got it. Got Check. It. Thank okay. you. And this is Dilusions by Diane Reevely. This is her paint. She's a really great um, art journalist as well. And I love her paint because it has like a little shaker ball in it that keeps the Ooh, pigment like nice. dispersed. Nice. And it's always stored like this, like this. On its head. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, some of those shampoo bottles are. 
Oh, yeah. So, okay, we're gonna use vibrant turquoise, white linen, lemon zest, gel medium. Okay, we'll have our washi tape and collage paper. And then we'll also, you might wanna have either scissors or an exacto craft knife available and a ruler for straight edges. I'm gonna use my round eight brush and um, I'm probably gonna use this flat wash brush for the gel medium, but you also could use this one if you want more texture. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute. I think that's all of our supplies. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's the supplies that came in the box and then we will talk about our actual project now. So at Let's Make Art, we like, for art journaling, we like to give you a prompt and a technique. Um, for each project. And you can mix and match these with your um, projects in your box that you get in the theme, or you can mix and match them with other themes and other cards. I try to make it where, you know, they're interchangeable for the most part. So the prompt that we're gonna use today is called Touch of Whimsy. <clears throat> and these are just to get you thinking, you know, you're, you're not like, you don't have to do exactly this, but it's just like, hey, this, this is a possibility for creating your art, makes sense? Using a photo of unknown origin as inspiration, such as a newspaper clipping, thrift store find, or portrait from a magazine, let's have a little fun by imagining a new story for it. What are some elements you can add to give it new life? Maybe you could add party hats, parasols, or crazy socks, add a little humor and whimsy. You can rewrite this person's history just by adding some artistic touches of your own. So um, this prompt is making me realize uh, the intention that I wanted to set today. And I think it's really important to set an intention when you're creating art just to kind of separate yourself from the world and what you wanted to accomplish when you're creating. So um, we'll do that right now. Because um, sometimes when we sit down to make art, it's like we want to we imagine like this perfect outcome and we're going to make this cool thing and we're going to be so proud of it. And sometimes that kind of stresses you out and then you don't have as much fun when you're making art, right? True. So, I mean, that's how it is for me. Maybe you make great art every time you sit down and that's awesome, but I don't always make great art. Sometimes I make art that's just kind of, you know, yeah. meh. Meh. It's a little meh. Um, but if I go into it, like, I'm gonna make this awesome thing, then I get stressed and then it for real is meh, <laughs> like most of the time. So I just, I make art for the sake of making art and feeling like I'm growing as a creative person and I enjoy making things regardless of the outcome. So that's why I like to set an intention. Just, just to be clear. Nice. So when I said intention, I just want to take a um, breath. So if you want to take a breath, we can do that. This like a big one, like, you know, rock, roll your shoulders and just like tell yourself, good job for showing up and being creative for yourself. Like there are a lot of things. Yes. He's just patting himself on the back. Yeah. I like that. There's a lot of other things you might be, could be doing right now, like dishes or I don't know, uh, lots of things that have to be done all the time, but you true. chose to make art right now. Good job. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you for joining. Okay, so the intention I wanna set is, um, let's be curious. I think uh, it's a good mindset to be in when you're making art, to just be curious and see where the art takes you. And for this project especially, like I don't know these kids. I don't know their names or where they came from, but it would be fun to make up um, just like a little little history for them. like Or just imagine like what kind of fun they were having earlier in the day before they posed for that picture or whatever. Yeah. So. Okay, That's so excellent. thank you. So our technique is gonna be um, making this and we're gonna get started. So I think what we should do first is paint the stripes on the page and then we'll let that dry and then we'll do some cutting and then by that time, we'll be able to glue our stuff on. I think that sounds like a good, a good plan. So get your, your new journal out. If you haven't made anything in this and you're a little bit scared, just don't even worry about it. It's paper, okay? It's just paper. It's gonna be fine. Sometimes I get nervous with a new journal. Yeah, totally. It's like, it's new, it's nice. I don't wanna mess it up. We're gonna just, let's get into it. Just get into it. Okay, I'm gonna shake up my paint. Dispense this, vibrant turquoise. Now on the card, I said, let's use shades of green. And I meant is like, let's mix the turquoise and the yellow in a couple different ways to give us different shades of green. But whatever I don't say on the card is made up with the video. So it's always good to get more information. That's just to refresh you on what we did together. So if you wanna do that card again, you got it. All right, I already got paint on me, so we're doing great. 
art has truly begun once there's <laughs> paint on the hand. Okay, so I'm just going to mix this um, light green. Can you see that, Keenan? I can see the mixing. Do you want to put your other journal as a reference? Oh, sure. Thank you. Over On here? The tape, yeah. I like it. All right. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that. And the fun thing about acrylic paint is if you add a little water, it can, it can sometimes act like watercolor a little bit when the pigment is watered down. And sometimes you can get you know, a bloom or something if you want that texture. Do you like to add water to the acrylic for ease of spreading? No, it's it's just because I want to have this kind of texture going on. Got it. If you don't want it to be as transparent, then you can, um, and you want it to be easier to spread, then the gel medium actually is made for that. So when you add water to the acrylic paint, it actually changes the, the characteristic of the paint. And um, the pigments aren't as, uh, what do you call it? Vibrant. Well, they just get split up because they're, they got water in it. You know what I mean? So yeah, then it's okay. a little bit more transparent. So if you want it to be easy to um, spread, but you don't want to lose the vibrancy of the pigment or it, the integrity is what I was trying to say, mm. um, then the gel medium is also really great for that. Um, but while this is wet, I'm just gonna drop in some water yes. to get some texture. And it, it will not bloom like watercolor. I mean, it's not watercolor and this is not watercolor paper, but you might get some interesting texture. So, so I, I always like to try. Jesse, would you be willing to scoot your journal up just a little bit? I would love to. Thank you. Yeah. So now I just went straight turquoise right here next to this green. And if you want a smoother transition between those colors, then you can come back with your green in, the, in between those. And you can do that. I kind of like the stark color, so I'm not going to work super hard at blending that, but I just wanted to give you an option. I like these colors. They make me think of like a summer pool. Yeah? Yeah. I was just thinking March. We had to have some green in there, you know? Oh. That makes sense too. Oh, I put a little green in there. That's all right. We'll get more in turquoise. Looks nice. Thanks. When did you start collecting pictures of vintage things? Oh my gosh, since always. <laughs> I can't remember not doing it. Wow. Um, I mean, I grew up in the South and I went to state sales with my mom just for fun because my mom really likes old stuff. And I remember her, she would like, almost like feel sorry for some object that she thought needed to be like taken care of. Like she was like, I'm gonna take this teacup home. This teacup looks like it was special to this person, like, cause it was oh. by the sink or some like place. And I always just thought that was pretty cool. And so I've always imagined the person that, you know, had had it because of her. Um, and, you know, going to New Orleans, like, which, you know, growing up where I did was not very far away was really fun because there's tons of culture there and different um, antique stores and stuff. And when I was going, you know, before the hurricane and everything, I don't know what it's like exactly now, but there used to be like one end of the street was like super high end, really expensive creative uh, um, antiques. And then the other end of the street was like the junk stores. And so when you walked, down the street, it was like really fancy and it was just like get junkier as you went down. And then like when I got to the end of the street, that's where I could buy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I had to do the whole street just like that, you know, it's like, okay. Um, and have this whole experience. And I remember one trip I made to New Orleans, I found this like old lunch box and it had a broken handle and it had just a rope on it. And I just loved it. 
because I was like, I bet somebody took their lunch to work in this every day and they loved it so much that they don't buy a new one, they just put a new handle on it. And later I did a, like a found objects sort of um, art exhibit and my friends told me that that lunchbox reminded them, them of the lunchbox they had. And then they gave me their grandpa's lunchbox <laughs> that also had like a rope handle and I still have it, I love it so much. I don't know, it's just so fun when you like value something and then someone has a connection. I don't know. And I think it's fun to make art and imagine that. So that's that's really like the heart of why I wanted to do this whole theme. I like the theme. It's a good one. Thanks. I used to collect marbles from antique stores. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. What a cool thing to collect. Yeah, I think I had I think I had like 160 marbles and at one point I had names for like 40 of them. Really? You named yeah. them? Like, uh -huh. give me some marble names now. I gotta well, know. Well, now I can't remember, but they were always, I always found the ones that... Well, do you name them like Frank or like Stormy or like <laughs> what kind of names are we talking so about here? So I would here? give them like how they looked, I would name them with that respective attribute. So like I had one, I remember was, it was like a blood red, but it also had a cloud in there almost. It was Ooh. gorgeous. And I called that one blood. Oh, so just okay. like... Things I mean, like that. that sounds like, like a literal like a boy name to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, young well, boys. I also like, used right. them for battles against blocks so and cool. my army men. So, you know. Good times. Definitely, definitely boy themed. I like it. Yeah. I had a leather pouch for my favorite ones. Oh, fun. I was more of a rock collector. Oh, okay. A lot of our rocks. And it's funny because my daughters are are that way now. But now you got me thinking like, maybe we should introduce them to marbles. I didn't really grow up with marbles. Marbles are fun because there are a lot of cool games you can play with marbles too. I used to have a whole little pamphlet of marble games. I think it's so interesting um, what different people collect. We have old lunch boxes. Me and my husband really love old lunch boxes. Besides like the one that I just described, we have the old ones where like when you're a kid and it has like a theme on it or like a movie like themed lunchbox, you know, like we have Planet of the Apes lunchbox. Nice. <laughs> You've seen those, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I love when someone has a collection of things that like I can see at their house. I think that's cool. So I would be interested to know what kind of things our, our art journal friends collect. Yeah. So you have to share that with us. And that's a cool, this, this makes it a really cool idea too to create some kind of art related to what you collect even. Oh yeah, good idea. You could do an art journal page with marbles. Yeah, well. If marbles is your thing. Oh, I thought you were telling me to do it. I was just saying I it in nervous. general. I wasn't trying to like. You already challenged me last month and it was, it was difficult for me to follow up. <laughs> well, I just think it's important to make time for art. So if you need a little kick, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Thank you. If you guys are just watching this and you haven't got your supplies out, go get your paint out and paint. Yeah. Come paint with us. <laughs> Sometimes I watch um, art tutorials when I'm tired and I'm not like got my supplies out and then I get like all inspired but I'm tired. I'm like, why did I do that? I love watching time lapses of art, things being drawn. Oh yeah, that's so fun. Yeah. Okay, so you can see where we did the lighter, we got a little bit of texture and then this is more opaque and I wanted it to be more opaque because I know we're gonna, I wanna go back over and do those white dots. So actually I might put a little bit more paint on there. Um, so the paint, the white dots kind of pop, you know? Mm -hmm. so the darker the contrast in the back, the more those are gonna pop out. I said I was finished and then I kept going. This <laughs> is what I do. Like just little touches, you know? Got a couple of finishing touches here. All right. So while we let that dry, we'll work on the next step. So we're gonna cut out our friends and this and this and the winks. Our friends. Do you got any names for our friends? Hmm. Gladys. Oh, Gladys is so cute. And Henry. Henry, I love that name too. Okay, just to make it easier, I'm going to cut out my photo first. Like, just like the rectangle part of it. And then I'll cut out my friends. Whoa. <laughs> I want to keep my exact you know what's interesting ruler. about old photos? Wow their posture. Really? Yes, they always have really good posture for the old 
because they had to stand there for so long, mm -hmm. I think. That's true. And they don't always smile. That's true. Probably because it hurt their face to smile for so long. Or I, I, I don't know if it hurt their face it necessarily. Have you tried to smile for 45 to 50 seconds? Yes, straight? I have. Like on my wedding day, my cheeks hurt, but it wasn't because <laughs> I was trying to smile, because I was actually smiling actually and happy. I was so happy that my face hurt. <laughs> I didn't know that was possible. It was just like the best day. I mean, I gotta wear a fancy dress. I gotta eat yummy food. I gotta be all around my favorite people. It was awesome. And my face hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes if you have good barbecue, your face hurts too. Because it's like you're chewing so much food. <laughs> it's immediately what I thought of. I like it. Okay, now I'm going to cut out the 7, 22, 38, 48, 71 here. So I like that. I'm going to talk more about why I like bingo in our next, in our Lucky Elephant project. Wow. Save that conversation for another video. Sneak peek. Well, sneak information. <laughs> I just like that you're saying it in that voice. <laughs> Everybody needs a hype man. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to I'm just going to go for it on this. It looks like a moth. I wanted to say butterfly, but I'm like I'm pretty sure anybody who knows anything about moths and butterflies and their different Species is going to say no. That's not a butterfly. That's a moth. I'm going to have to ask Michael what what constitutes a moth versus a butterfly. Yeah. Because he knows some question. of that stuff. I feel like he would know that. He I don't know. Maybe to. he doesn't. Maybe. No, he's very curious about these things. He has he likes, to. He likes biology. Yes. Right? I think he is a biologist. Cool. Okay, so I'm just cutting this out. And one tip. Now, when I put, when I designed this and I put the moth on the paper, I put it on a color that was similar to the moth so that if you're trimming it out and you didn't quite get it, it would still look okay. But my tip for cutting things out like this is to go right inside of it instead of right on the line so that then you don't get the edge that you don't want in there. Does that make sense? I don't know if I said that clearly. I mean, yeah, I think it makes sense. So just a little bit inside the line. Yeah. Is where you want to cut. And I've been cutting stuff out with an X-Acto for a long time. It takes a little practice. So if you're not as quick as I am, that is okay. It will come. Um, sometimes um, I've seen people use tiny little scissors and they really like that. Uh, so that could be an option for you if you're not liking the exacto. I just, I just love it because I feel like it's drawing with a knife. <laughs> Sounds cool, right? I'm not going to worry about these That's antennas so cool. because they're not going to be part of my thing. I'm just cutting out the body so it'll be easier to glue onto my girl. I did try this with just cutting the wings and it was hard to line up and I thought, why did I cut out the wings? I could just cut out the whole thing and glue it to her. So that's what I did. So you can learn from my, my uh, trial and error is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I'm gonna cut out forever friends. It's a lot of cutting, but it's gonna be cool. I like forever friends because I, they're either friends or they're siblings, right? Right. I'm guessing they're siblings, probably because photos were more expensive then, and I don't know if they're trying to capture their little friends as much as they're trying to capture their family. I mean, I agree with that. But I like the idea of siblings being forever friends. Someone that you get to experience life with in a similar way. You know? Friends are great. 
It's I fun, too, the experiences that you guys can go to, through with together. You both still have a different perspective of that situation. Super true. And that's, I think, what is important with having a forever friend. Yeah, because I'm the youngest in my family, and my brothers are always like, well, you're the youngest, so yeah. blah, blah, blah. Keenan's the youngest, so we bond on this. Yes. But I'm also like, yeah, but I'll always be the youngest, so everyone will always think that they know more than me because, you know, they've had more experience in more years. Exactly. And I'm a grown-up now. <laughs> I know stuff, okay? <laughs> I know stuff, dang it. <laughs> it's just so funny when you get back around your family and those, like, like assumptions or, like, relations, like, come back. Like, you know, I'm a grown-up now. Like, I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you guys with that. <laughs> just a little insight to my insecurity about being the youngest. <laughs> You get it, Keenan. I get it. So okay. I just don't talk to my family. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Keenan has a sister I really like that I get to see often. She's awesome. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit more inside. I mean, can you see that on the side cam? I really wanted to see that. So Actually, if you wanna push it up a little to the right. Um, this is my right. There you go. You're right. <laughs> I'm like this way, right? Yes. Okay. You're good right there. Um, so I'm just, when I cut her dress, I'm just going to come in a little bit more so that I don't get that dark background on the edge of my photo. All right? Got it. And then the other thing when you're cutting something really intricate like this is turn your photo or your paper so it's easy for your right hand or your left hand, whichever one you're cutting, to... Um, cut at a comfortable way because if you're trying to cut like this it, it, it's more difficult mm. and I know I say this on like a lot of the videos but I just never know when someone new's coming in or maybe they're trying the exacto for the first time so I just want yeah. you to have the tips and the other thing the posture of the exacto might help as well <laughs> is my head in a way <laughs> this is Keenan being subtle but then I'm like well people don't know what he's talking about okay so I'm just gonna come in a little bit more on that dress. Can, am I out of the way now? Yeah, do you, okay. wanna, you wanna push it up to the top of that little mat? Well, I'm trying to do it where I'm comfortable. Nope, <laughs> this not, is allowed. Very not allowed. We gotta be able to see it, you know? We gotta be able to see it. I know, that's why I moved it though. So <laughs> I will be uncomfortable for y'all. Don't you worry. You're good, this is great. Okay, so see how we didn't get um, the edge, but we got her. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, that's super fun. It looks like she's just popping off that color. Right. Off that, uh, Page. And she just has the cutest little arm right here. I'm gonna try really careful to get, all right. I do that to check to make sure I got it cut all the way, but it does it is kind of a cool effect. Just take your time, like, um, I think that helps too. Like, I kind of enjoy this part of it. It's like detail, I don't know, I like it. Gladys and Henry, that's what we decided. Yep. Gladys's shoes, she has like little Mary Janes, they're really cute. Very stylish. Mm -hmm. And these socks are great. I couldn't help but want to embellish the socks, so we're going to embellish um, Henry's socks. Trying to keep it in the spot where you can see it. Okay, so we're doing good. We're getting there, getting around there. Now, I'm going to cut that part for her dress and where they're kind of look like they're smushed up against each other, or maybe they're holding hands. It's unclear exactly where to cut, so I'm just gonna make it up. I'm just gonna cut straight across there. This is the thing, when you're doing um, collage and you're deciding what you're gonna cut out and what you're gonna keep, people don't know what was there before, so you don't need to worry about it. Just worry about what's gonna look good when you cut it out. Like these shoes are kind of tricky to see where the... It is a little tricky to see those. Um, where the ground is versus where the shoe is. So we might need to just decide the shape we wanna cut out and go with it. And then your eye is gonna like say, oh yeah, that looks like shoes, you know? Shoes. Shoes. Sure. 
And if you're like, y'all, I ain't about all that cutting, you don't have to cut it out. You could just use the photo how it is. Like, um, do what you're comfortable with and what you're excited about making. Don't be trying to do stuff that doesn't sound fun. If it's not fun, then don't cut it out. Good tip. I just don't want to do something that's going to make somebody not want to make something. Like, so if I can give them an option to try something else, then I want to do that. But this, you got this if you want to do it. You, it's, you can do it. Yeah, you've got it. Just keep, just keep slicing. <laughs> okay, same thing here with his hand. It's a little bit hard to tell where his hand is and where that shrub is, but we're just gonna, just gonna go for it. So cute. So yeah, now I'm gonna go just a little inside of that shirt just to be sure we get what we want. I'm so excited to embellish this. Can you bring that up just a little? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Okay, got just his ear and his shoulder and we'll have it. Nice. They both got their hair done today, so that's nice. Yeah, looking good. Fresh cut. Look at that. Wow. So cute. Okay, so now let's do some embellishing. I just thought this washi tape with the stripes would be fun socks. Now, if you have another one, um, I think they would also make good socks, or you can make your own stripes with whatever color you got. So, but I'm gonna go for it on this. And I think that, let's see. I'm just gonna make a straight edge like this with my X-Acto. Because hmm. I kind of tore that tape when I tore it off. That's all right. Get that out of there. Okay. And because his legs are skinny and his tape is wide, I'm just going to Put it over both legs and then my socks are gonna line up really nice. And then I think I want my socks to stop like right there. So now I know the height of my socks. I'm gonna gently tear that off my page. You can do this however you want. If you want like crazy socks and go for it. I just wanted to give you an idea of like how I did this. So now I'm gonna cut this part off. Whoops. Got a little wrinkly, but that's all right. One of the socks could be higher than the other. I'm cool with that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, now I'm gonna flip them over and I'm just gonna cut off what doesn't belong. Ah. Tricks, good tricks. Super cool. I was totally trying to figure out how you were gonna do that. <laughs> All right, let's see these socks. Cute. Dang, look at those little guy's socks. Just needed to round them off a little bit. Yeah, I'm liking those socks. All right, <laughs> now for her dress, I thought she needed some color. And if we wanted to, we could do gel medium over this and then um, paint it. But I just thought this washi tape is so fun. Let's keep going with the washi tape. So this washi tape just has like different color stripes. And I just stuck it on, y'all, like that. And I just kept going. That's what I did. Cool. So that's what we're going to do. And I just kind of tore it wherever it needed to be torn to fit the shape of what we're doing. So that one looks like it could fit right there. 
except for that little piece. Just tear that off. My tape is, it's cold back here, so I might have needed to warm it up a little. It, it definitely is a little cold. <laughs> we film these ahead of time. Um, so I'm hoping the weather when this comes out is warmer for everyone, not just for me, just, you know, because it makes me happy when the weather is warm. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> and my tape is not cold. Also, sometimes washi tapey, just washi tape, washi tapey. Washi tapey. <laughs> it gets a little sticky anyway. I might start calling it washi tapey now. <laughs> Permanently. Washi tapey. I got my washi tapey. I'm doing arts and crafts. <laughs> He's going to write songs for us now. I like it. Some cheerleading art songs. That's what we need. Cheerleading art That's songs. That's what I'm tasking you with today. You're doing so great. Need some art cheers. If you could come in next time with like a flag, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Give me an A. <laughs> Give me an art. Give me a T. Art. I like it. I'll learn how to do a backflip and it will be cool. But can you do it in the studio? Yes. Now I have to. Yeah. You're committed. I just tore that and I'm like, oh, that looks like it's like the same shape as like right by your arm. And it is. Look at that. That's so fun. So yeah, just look at your tear and say, where does that match up? And then put it there. Whoops, I covered our cute little fingers though. Yeah, and if you wanna cover her whole dress, great. If you wanna leave some of it not covered, it's yours, you can do whatever you want. And this comes out different every time, just nature of the project. I think that's kind of the bonus, though. That's, that's makes No matter it how hard like you that. try, you're always going to get something different and special. Mm-hmm. Trying to decide where I want to put that. I want to put that right there. I just had so much fun with this project, I kept on going, so I'm realizing that this is probably gonna be a longer tutorial, but we're all right with that, right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> that's really just having fun tearing tape. I mean, that's what this is right now. <laughs> And you could do that same thing where like, okay, I want to get her collar right, but it's going to go off the side of her dress. So I'm just going to trim that part off. Flip and rip. Yeah. <laughs> like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is where I think an exacto kind of helps, but you probably could do this with scissors too. I don't know. I'm thinking you could. That's looking pretty cute. That's nice. Okay. I could keep going, but I'm going to, you, you, could, you get it. All right, now, like I said, the first time I did this, I cut the wings off and I was trying to like figure out where should it go. And then next time I was like, what if we just did it where the body lines up with her and we glued it down like that. And then it was like, oh yeah, that looks natural. That looks like she actually is got some wings. A moth lady. That's so cute. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna, I just get really excited sometimes. <laughs> no, that's accepted. Thanks. Thanks. I'm glad I'm accepted here yes. at Let's Make Art. It's welcome. We, we want that. We welcome your nerdy art excitement, whatever it may be. Nerdy art excitement. <laughs> okay. Let me get my... I left the top off of my gel medium for a little bit, which is naughty. <laughs> Don't do that. And it kind of dried in there. So I'm going to work on this for a second. 
Okay, I have another one of these. I'll just Here, grab it. Here, toss it to me. I'll toss this to Keenan. I have another one. I'll grab it really quick and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Actually, just cleaned this one and it was great. <laughs> and I should have just showed you that because that might happen to you, but I didn't. I'm really sorry. There's not a sink right here, so that would have been hard. It would have been difficult. Um, basically, this little guy comes off like that and we just cleaned it in a sink with hot water until we got the dried up part that was stuck in there out. And that happens to you, that's what you can do. All right, so we got our gel medium on the tray. A little more of that, all right. And, okay, so I've talked about this brush just to keep like gesso and stuff with it, but with the gel medium, I really think, especially with this kind of thing, that this brush works nice. And I put some tape on this brush to kind of, to differentiate it from my other brushes, because this kind of medium is like a little bit harder on your brushes that way. You can do whatever you want though. Okay, so I got my flat brush and I'm going to just put a little bit of this on the back of this. And then I'm going to put my wings on there. I mean, we're gonna glue these guys down so we can just do it all the way if we want there. Okay, we got that. Now, let's line up our wings. I think I want it to be like right there, but I'm gonna check. Yep, that's perfect. So then I'll put more gel medium on the wings too, on the back. So we've stuck the wings to her and now we're gonna stick the wings down. You know what she's, you know what her favorite song is? What? I believe I can fly. <laughs> she really likes Space Jam. <laughs> yes. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, she does. Gladys. Space Jam fan. Big I don't fan. know. I don't know. That's our, that's that's a stretch for me in my imagination, but maybe in Keenan's world, Gladys Keenan's likes Space world. Jam. Oh, okay. Whoop. Okay, there's glue on that. Move that out of the way for a second. All right. Okay, now I'm just using the finger that doesn't have glue on it. That's why I'm using different fingers. <laughs> so I'm not like sticking the glue on there while I'm trying to smooth it down, if that makes sense. My pinky is the one that doesn't have as much glue on it, so. Whoop! Got the old bendy knee there. There we the go. The old bendy knee. I've got those. <laughs> you and Henry got something in common? <laughs> bendy knees. Okay. Yeah, cool, I'm liking this, all right. So now I'm just gonna get my paper to stay down. There we go. Okay, so we got a couple more things we wanna put on. We're gonna put this on right under there so they look like they're kind of standing on it. I mean, you could have them floating, but I kind of like to give my, my people some solid ground. I'm just gonna put some gel medium on the back of that. It's a little swipe. Now I've had people ask, like in the Facebook group and stuff, we have this really cool community and Facebook group of people hang out there and talk art journal nerd stuff. We like it. Um, like, why wouldn't you just use gel medium all the time instead of yes paste? Well, it's different. And that has a different purpose. It's really great for what we're doing right now. But yes paste is also um, water soluble and it has a longer drying time. And so like right now, I, I can't really shift this much if I wanted to move it and the yes pace, I would still have time to be moving it around. So there's, there's that one difference. But for this, I'm okay with that. Okay, the other thing that I did was I put washi tape right in here. So I'm gonna do that. I can get this washi tape to be warm enough to unstick from the roll. I just love this stripe, it's so cute. So, so cute. I think I want it to be just a little bit wider than my numbers. Am 
my numbers, meaning the bingo thing we're talking about here. All right. Oh, everything's sticking to me. Cute. I just like to, if I'm using something in one spot, sometimes I like to have repetition in my page and have it somewhere else, kind of bringing things back together or whatever. So whatever paper you decide to use, you could, if you did like the flowery one there, then you could do the flower one again down there. Whatever you like. Okay, and then we'll do Forever France because it's so cute. Should probably do it on this instead of our <laughs> mat, which I, it's already happened. It's okay. I'm an artist. I make messes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. part of like an artist anthem. <laughs> I make messes. Oh my cuteness. I like that. Okay. So the last thing that we're going to do is this little hat. <laughs> Which I just did the tiniest bit of this blue because I just thought it looked kind of like fabric. I just did a little triangle. I'm going to need that back. That cutting mat. I don't want to cut on this mat. Do that, and that just a little triangle. We'll see if this triangle is big enough. This hat makes me think of all the uh, like newspaper hats I would make as a kid to wear. Oh yeah, did you make newspaper hats? That's so fun. Yeah, newspaper hats, uh, newspaper boats. I made paper dresses from what? brown paper socks from Piggly Wiggly. We would like cut the, <laughs> Piggly Wiggly's grocery store, sorry, yes. that sounded weird. <laughs> um, we cut the arms out of the, and the neck and then just put it on and then we <laughs> paint it and like color it. That's amazing. I need to do that with my girls. I haven't, I haven't done paper dresses with them. That. Okay, so I think that is cute. So I'm going to paste it down here with a gel medium. It was sticking to my finger instead of paper, but we got it. I just think this is a fun one to decorate this way because kids have such a fun imagination. Like, I don't know what I was thinking like when I made paper dresses, except for like, this is fun and we're gonna do a fashion show and we're gonna make our own dresses. Like, and there's something about being grown up that keeps us from like doing that. My kids are always like just so imaginative and coming up with things and it just makes me so excited to make art when they're doing kind of stuff like that because I'm like, yeah. Hmm. So maybe artists are really just kids that never grew up because <laughs> we're just still using our imagination. I agree with that. I refuse to grow up. Okay, so I just got that red washi tape and just cut a little circle for the top of my hat. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> All right, so our last thing is just embellishing with this white paint. And I think I might have done that and then the hat, whatever, it's fine. And sometimes I'll have gel medium on my palette like this, and it kind of looks like white paint. And it does look white when it's like this, but it dries clear. So don't mistake your gel medium for white paint, because <laughs> I do that all the time. I don't know where I put this top, but it's important to put this top back on immediately when you're done so it doesn't dry out and you don't have trouble with the top. Is that your gel medium? Yeah. That, oh, here it is. There it is. Here's the top. Put it on. Tina Wakely makes such good products. I love that gel medium in that size that I can just carry around with, it, with, with me wherever and that it like dispenses so easily. Okay, white paint. I'm gonna use my round eight brush. I don't want to show you something. I've been using this brush for like a while and it's starting to lose its shape. So if yours is doing that, it might be time for a new brush. If you've been painting with me for a while and you are starting to lose that edge, then you might need a new brush. Okay, 
So I'm just going to do some white dots in a row here, just using the tip of that brush. And I'm not even like trying to make a stripe, I'm just literally putting the brush down and picking it up. Whoop, almost got the gel medium. <laughs> it's tricky, you guys, keep your stuff straight. I just forget, get excited about what I'm making. Still going for it. I think Gladys likes our new dress. Oh, totally. She said, you know what I love? Gray socks. But you know what I love more? This new <laughs> dress. And if you want Gladys to have funky socks, you can do that. She just wanted to one-up her bro brother Henry mm -hmm. because of his socks. Yeah, he's just like, wait a minute, why does he have cool socks? I want cool socks. <laughs> I think I made bigger dots or whatever last time I did this, but that's all right. Whatever size dots you want to do is going to be fine. Or these are more like dashes, maybe? Hmm. I was thinking teardrops because of uh, how they're shaped. Oh, yeah? But yeah, dashes. Well, it's not sad. They're, these are not tears. No, I know. Oh, okay. But isn't teardrop a shape? Yes. Yeah. I was just like, they're not crying. No, they're, they're they got party clothes on. They're having yeah. a good time. I mean, if you want to make yours with tears, Keenan, you can do that. Thank you. You're, whatever, whatever art you want, I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that it has to be happy. That's what I love about our journey, you know, that you can just process your feelings, whatever you're feeling that day, just go for it. I really like some of the moody journal pages I've made. <laughs> couple more. I like these dashes. Sometimes I just like embellishments. Yeah. Just like something repetitive is kind of calming to make. Henry likes it. He looks like he likes it. Yeah, I like it. I think that dark just needs to be a little darker. Sometimes when you do multiple dots, the dots gets a little lighter as you run out of paint on the brush. Oh, if you're wanting to be darker, you can go back and give them another pass. But I think our Forever Friends is all done. We did it. How fun is that? So much fun. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love this. I love making art with old photos and just imagining new stories for them. I hope that you had a good time doing this. And I know whatever you're using, if you are using different supplies, but you're kind of following along, that you'll come up with something cool and we want to see it. Or if you use these supplies and you mixed it up some kind of way, we want to see that. If you made it exactly like how we made it, we still want to see it. So if you want to share these, we have this fabulous um, Facebook group community that is full of art cheerleaders and resources and resources yeah so if you have questions about different things they are so quick to answer there yes um so you can find that and let's make art journals and you can also tag your work um hashtag it on instagram and people can find your work there and they can all kind of see what we all made together and that really like kind of brings us together which i love thanks so much for painting this with us and being here with us and making time for art we'll see you next time <laughs>